Hey everybody, it's Jake Tapper. Welcome to The Lead. Now it's time for our world lead. It's a manhunt that seems to be quickly turning into a high-stakes game of Where's Waldo? Only there's no telltale striped hat to help us pull Edward Snowden out of the crowd. So where is he? Right now, no one really seems to know. We do think he left Hong Kong yesterday when he was reportedly seen on a flight to Russia. Meanwhile, speaking from his hideout in Ecuador's London embassy, WikiLeaks co-founder Julian Assange stood by his support for Snowden in a conference call with reporters, saying that Snowden was with a WikiLeaks spokesperson and was both healthy and safe. This morning, the U.S. Secretary of State called Edward Snowden a traitor. Edward Snowden uh, is not a traitor. He is not a spy. He is a whistleblower who has told the public an important truth. But Assange would not give up the location of the WikiLeaks activist and Edward Snowden. So where could they be? Well, there are a few theories and endless possibilities. They could be sitting in the Moscow airport. The Russian foreign ministry has said that Snowden has not entered Russia, implying that he remains somewhere on the transit side of airport immigration. He could also potentially be hiding on Aeroflot 150. That's the flight scheduled to land in Cuba in about two and a half hours from now. The flight plan, which the aircraft appears to be following, takes a route right over the mid-Atlantic United States. CNN's Phil Black is on board that flight. Last we heard before takeoff, there was no sign of Snowden on the flight. Still, a van reportedly pulled up alongside the plane right before departure, and someone was seen boarding. We'll bring you the latest as soon as that plane touches down. But there's also another flight that had filed a flight plan to leave Moscow for Havana just after noon Eastern time today. That plane was listed as an Airbus A330Q. Other planes with that Q designation have taken flight paths that avoid U.S. airspace, but ground crews in Moscow are now denying to CNN that there was ever such a flight scheduled. Wherever he is, the White House says they are outraged that China let Snowden, Snowden slip through their fingers yesterday when he fled Hong Kong. To your question about the Chinese government, we are just not buying that this was a technical decision by a Hong Kong immigration official. This was a deliberate choice by the government to release a fugitive despite a valid arrest warrant, and that decision unquestionably has a negative impact on the U.S.-China relationship. And here to talk about all of this is Glenn Greenwald, columnist for The Guardian and one of the two reporters who broke the story of Snowden's leak and has written extensively about these leaks since then. So Glenn, do you have any idea where Ed Snowden is right now? No, I, I actually have no idea. The last time I spoke with him, he was in Hong Kong and I don't know anything more than media reports which also don't seem to know anything about his whereabouts at the moment. So we have a general idea of the path that he seems to want to take from Hong Kong to Russia, and now perhaps to Ecuador via Cuba. Now, none of these countries are exactly beacons of freedom, uh, especially uh, Russia and China and Cuba. Why do you think he's headed to Ecuador? I think the reason is, is very simple, and it's really twofold. Number one is that the United States, unfortunately, is not a beacon of press freedom either. If you read the column by the New York Times writer David Carr today, what he says is that the fact that there is a war on the press being waged by the Obama administration is not a matter of hyperbole, but a matter of math, meaning that the number of, people, of whistleblowers who have been persecuted under the Obama administration is far more than any other president in American history. And he knows that he will face extremely severe punishment simply for having come forward. And that leads to the second reason, which is he needs to find a place that is both able and willing to grant him asylum and shield him from that persecution. There aren't many places on the earth willing or able to do that. Um, he's not searching for political nirvana. He's searching for a place where he can be safe and, and remain free um, and participate in the debate. And Ecuador, it seems to be, it seems to be the case, is, is the place that he has chosen. Well, Glenn, you, the, the, the new law in Ecuador that was passed actually restricts what the press can write. What President Obama is doing uh, is going after leaks, and that, according to investigative reporters, is having a chilling effect on what they can report. Uh, but it's certainly not the same type of war on free press that we see in Ecuador. 
Yeah, I'm not suggesting that they're equal. As I said, he's not running around the world searching for what he thinks is a beacon of liberty. He's running around the world searching for a place that he can be free from American prosecution. And, and personally, as an American citizen, as an American journalist, um, I'm much more interested in the repressive steps being taken by my own government, by the spying apparatus being built in the dark, by the lies being told by US officials to the American public, than I am in what country Mr. Snowden tries to live in. Um, that, to me, seems to be a much more significant question. By reaching out to Julian Assange uh, and the WikiLeaks organization, um, but especially Assange, who is currently wanted for questioning over allegations that he raped one woman and sexually molested another. Allegations, I should say, not, not proof, proven fact. But by affiliating himself with Julian Assange, is Edward Snowden risking uh, changing the dynamic, changing the meme, the narrative that he wants out there about himself being, standing up for, for something, standing up against uh, the, these surveillance programs that the National Security Agency is standing for? Well, I mean, I'm not certain that what the extent of Mr. Assange's personal involvement was in any of this, as opposed to the WikiLeaks organization, um, which has never been charged with a crime, let alone convicted of one. And as you pointed out, Mr. Assange has never been convicted of a crime either. Um, but I think the, the more important point here is that anybody who leaks classified information and who brings transparency to the United States government is going to be the subject of an extremely aggressive and sustained demonization campaign. That was true of, of Bradley Manning, it was true of Daniel Ellsberg, it was true of Thomas Drake, it is true of every single person who does what it is that Mr. Snowden did. So the attacks on him, on his personality, on claims to be able to assess his psychological state, that he's a narcissist, all of that, were well underway long before WikiLeaks began to be involved. I do think that the involvement of WikiLeaks will be used as another pretext to distract attention away from what we ought to be focusing on, which is the corruption and deceit of the United States government, the government that's the most powerful government on earth and the one under which we live. Glenn, you got into a debate uh, yesterday with David Gregory of NBC News, who essentially uh, said you've aided and abetted Edward Snowden. To the extent that you have aided and abetted Snowden, even in his current movements, why shouldn't you, Mr. Greenwald, be charged with a crime? I think it's pretty extraordinary that anybody who would call themselves a journalist would publicly muse about whether or not other journalists should be charged with felonies. The assumption in your question, David, is completely without evidence, the idea that I've aided and abetted him in any way. Fox News Channel's James Rosen encouraged his leaker to give him documents and set up what he thought was a secret way to email him. Uh, I'm not going to launch any accusations at you, Glenn, but did you do anything beyond what James Rosen did in terms of communication with Snowden? Did you work with him to get him a job at Booz Allen? Did you advise him on how to transfer the documents? The reason I've been reluctant to answer that question up until this point is because the theory on which those questions are based and I'm not suggesting you're embracing it, but you're, you're, you're referencing the theory that others have embraced, is really quite pernicious, that if you're a journalist and you work with your source and, 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 and cooperate with them in, in obtaining documents that you think ought to be released to the public, that somehow that's called aiding and abetting. I call that investigative journalism. There is no investigative journalist on the planet who doesn't work cooperatively with their sources in order to obtain the information they need to inform their readers. That said, um, not only did I not do more than Mr. Rosen was accused of doing by the Justice Department when he was called a co-conspirator, I did much, much less. I didn't even know where Mr. Snowden worked or what his name was until after he was on, in Hong Kong with the documents. We had some preliminary communication with him about how to communicate uh, secretly um, in a way that would be secure, uh, but other than that, nothing. And so anybody who wants to raise this insinuation against me, against the Washington Post, Bart Gelman, or anybody else that we somehow aided and abetted Mr. Snowden, anyone who wants to even raise that, let alone claim it, um, ought to be compelled to point to specifics or point to evidence to support that accusation because there is none. Otherwise, it, it's just reckless insinuation and shouldn't be tolerated. And Glenn, before I let you go, I know you wanted to talk about a story that was reported in McClatchy uh, a few days ago about ways in which the Obama administration uh, is trying to make sure that no one leaks any information to anyone, whether it's national security related or not. 
Right. I think that's really the key context, Jake, for everything that we discussed about why he's going to Ecuador, about why it is that he's trying to travel through these other countries. We do have a climate in the United States that has been created over the last five years in which leakers and whistleblowers, people who step forward to inform the public about classified information because they think it reveals wrongdoing, are treated, as this McClatchy article said, as enemies of the state, basically traitors. They're not people who work for a foreign government, sold the information, worked at the behest of foreign governments. Just anybody who discloses anything the government marks classified is deemed to be an enemy of the state and punished severely. And that is a very dangerous threat to the news gathering process. And it's the reason why whistleblowers who come forward, like Mr. Snowden, feel a need to flee because the government has become so oppressive with regard to that behavior. All right, Glenn Greenwald, thank you so much. Thanks, Jake.